Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Miller. I'm the owner operator here at Miller Sugar Shack. Uh, Miller Sugar Shack was established in 2012 uh, is when we built the sugar house that we're sitting in right now. Um, my maple syrup journey started much earlier than that. I think I was around the age of eight or nine is when I um, first tapped my first trees and started making my first maple syrup. Um, in the early days, we obviously didn't have an evaporator like what's sitting behind us here. I think we tapped maybe 10 trees the first year that, that I ever tapped and we had a cast iron um, kettle that sat in a, uh, a 55 gallon drum and that's how we made our first, first batch of maple syrup. Um, and we've slowly over the years graduated up a little bit. Um, I built a homemade evaporator out of uh, cinder blocks. I built a cinder block arch um, and welded some angle iron and put some steam pans in. And I'll, I'll share a picture of that as well. Um, but then in 2012 is when I was like, you know, I took my, my passion and my, my hobby and kind of turned it into more than that. You know, I wanted to make some some uh, maple syrup to be able to, to sell and, and share with others. And, and um, in 2015, we purchased the evaporator that's sitting behind me here. Um, this evaporator here is state of the art. It's um, got a completely sealed arch. It's got a blower that, that um, blows air into the firebox. We still do use um, traditional wood fired here at Miller Sugar Shack. This unit can process about 175 gallons of sap per hour. Um, and we produce just over or right around 30 gallons of finished product of maple syrup um, every hour when we're running. Um, we tap uh, just right at a thousand taps of our own on a, on a high vacuum tubing system. Uh, we do custom boil for quite a few. Um, all in all total taps with our taps and what other folks um, tap and bring to me for custom boiling, we're, we're right at 3,000 taps. Uh, we average right around five, six to seven hundred gallons of, of finished product of syrup a year, and uh, we usually run from from uh, the middle to the end of January to the middle of March. Has been our maple syrup season here in Ohio the last several years. So this is a releaser. Um, basically, we've got 450 taps up on this front section here, and all those taps come to the central location. Basically, what this what this is, is it's, a, it's called a double barrel releaser. Um, and so it's constantly is on vacuum. It's actually getting ready to trip right here. Um, this teeter totter looking deal here. There's floats inside these chambers. And when that sap gets in there and starts filling up, it pushes that float up. And then here in a second, you'll see it dump. And then when it dumps, it trips the vacuum to the other chamber and starts filling that chamber while the other one dumps. So it's a continuous vacuum. Wow, that's pretty sophisticated. There we go. And it switches and starts drawing in the other side. Wow, that's yeah. pretty wild. She's about ready to overflow. Then we just hook up the pump and pump her on up over the hill to the sugar house. How long does it take to, to pump this amount up um, to the sugar house? It takes house? about 15, 20 minutes to pump about 250 gallons. Okay. So we've got roughly, what, 500 gallons sitting here. So yeah. It'll take half hour probably. We can't wind the pump up too too high. You don't want to burn the pump up. Right. Um, we're running about, on this release, we're running right at 25 inches of vacuum. Um, perfect vacuum is 30 inches. Okay. But in reality, there's just it's so tough to get up around 30. Um, there, I'm sure there's still some leaks and stuff because the back system is sitting right at about 26 inches of vacuum. Um, so the first year you put your tubing and stuff in is obviously you're, you're going to have your best vacuum because everything's tight, all the fittings are tight. Makes and sense. After the first year, squirrels get in there and they start gnawing on it and, and all that good stuff. So. I imagine the wind blowing the trees probably doesn't help with the yeah. connections yeah, either. Yeah, that doesn't help either. Here, we can come up here and pull one of these taps off the tree and just kind of see the sap coming out of it. There we go. There you can wow. hear the vacuum a little bit. It's pretty crazy how quick it works. 
And, and what's really nice about a vacuum system is like once once it starts cooling down, mm -hmm. a lot of times like just gravity, it'll cause the tree to stop running. But with vacuum, we're able to get, we're able to get about 75% more sap, um, 75 to 80% more on a vacuum system than we are just gravity. Right, makes sense. So we used to, before we had the tubing system, we did everything in bags and we'd have to drive the tractor through the woods and oh, really? one of those big totes on it, you know, and and go along and collect it with five gallon buckets and dump it in the dump it in the uh, tote a lot of work yeah I believe it so, I mean it's already it's still a lot of work but it's not this by doing all this tubing definitely saves so again how many feet of tubing do you have run right oh, out here oh goodness if you was to guess we probably have about Probably about 20,000 feet of three-quarter inch main line, which is which is this, the bigger of the, the okay. blue line. Okay. Um, and then I probably have out probably 50,000 or 75,000 feet of the the five sixteenths lateral. Tube. Wow. Um, if I had to get, I might be right, completely right, off on right. Right. This is the vacuum pump that runs the whole system. Basically, this vacuum pump's been running non-stop for the last three days. It just wow. sits here and runs. It's got a radiator on it. Okay. Keeps your oil at the right temperature. Keeps it from overheating. So when it comes up from up there, it goes over into here? Yep. This line here comes from the front. The mountain comes from the back. Okay. On the back, we have a, it's called a vacuum powered piston pump. Um, it's ran off the vacuum and there's a float system. So basically, once it gets up to a certain level, when it kicks that pump on, it can just pumps it up a thousand feet and lasts about two hours. Wow, and that's go nice. Go back there and mess with it. Up here, we still have to go manually. How many gallons is this tank? It's a 1,640 gallons. Wow. When we started this morning, this tank was about as full as it is now, and that one was about as full as it was. And that was just from our staff that we collected over the last 24 hours. And we had one of our guys that brings sap to us about 1,300 gallons this morning. So okay. we removed about, well, about half of that in water. This is all permeate water. This is the water that comes out of the out of the sap. It's actually pretty cool. I don't know if your camera will pick it up, but if you shine it down in there, the the water is crystal clear. Yeah, it is. I can see that. It's pretty cool. And what's that used for? We use that to clean out the RO at the end of the day. Okay. Um, obviously, there's a, when you're done concentrating, there's a lot of sugar left in the membrane. So what I'll do is I'll I'll run this through the RO just like I'm concentrating sap. Remove all the sugar from the membrane, so I'm still processing that. Once it gets down to where there's no sugar in the membrane, I'll kick it over into a rinse cycle, 300 gallon rinse cycle, and a wash cycle, and then we'll rinse cycle. Wow. And we also use it for, you know, spraying stuff down and keeping the sugar out. There. Right, right. So basically, what it does is it comes from there through the wall into our R room. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it here. What this unit's doing is it's removing about 75 to 80% of the water before we ever even process it. So it's coming out of the trees at about 1.5% sugar content. And we're taking it up to about 10, um, 10 or 11% and then processing it through the evaporator. So we're being more efficient. We're cutting down on time, evaporating, and uh, yeah, saving time and money in the long run. Right, right. Makes sense. Yep. That's the backbone of the, the operation right there. All right, so this is our evaporator. Uh, we talked about a minute ago about the reverse osmosis and that whole process. And then this is where we are then evaporating the water and caramelizing the sugars, and then we're getting that pure maple syrup. So basically what happens is from the reverse osmosis, the sap is pumped through um, this blue tubing on the ceiling into this. Uh, this is our concentrate tank.
extend gravity fed from there through this white PVC pipe into the other side of the steam away pan. Um, and then in the steam away pan, it starts the evaporation process, takes the sap up to about 100, 185, 190 degrees. And then everything is on a float system. So there's a float in this box, which controls your level in the steam away pan. And then there's also a float here um, that controls your level in your, in your flute pan. So it's coming out of this pipe um, into the flute pan. So right now we're right at 190 degrees is the temperature of the sap before it ever comes into the flue pan. Okay. Um, and then through the flue pan, it comes out in this float box right here. And this float controls the level in the, we call this the finish pan or the syrup pan or whatever. Um, and then this is where it makes its, its final journey through the, through the, the finishing can to be drawn off right here is pure maple syrup. So like today, I've got the sap going in this side of the float box. It's running through the syrup pan back across that channel and each one of those opposite corners is holes so it's running in a continuous flow and then in this final one here is where I'm drawing off of. Let's check it again here. gets that constant flow to where it's drawing off, letting more in. It's, it's like a, once you get it dialed in, it will literally, I mean, you can walk away from this thing. All you gotta do is put wood in it, and it will, really? it'll basically, I mean, it'll draw Run itself. by itself. Um, but it takes a little bit, you know, to get it dialed in to where that number is perfect. Because you wanna, so say it's like 217.5, that might not actually be quite syrup yet. So once I, get rolling here a lot further down the line I'll test it with the hydrometer and I'll right before it's syrup I'll make it start drawing off because as you start drawing off your level in your, in your syrup pan drops a little bit and it makes it get ready a lot quicker so by having it start just at the bottom edge of that threshold you know it starts drawing and it gets ready and draws because there's times where um, the syrup will actually be a lot thicker when it comes out at, at its peak in the number. So if you do this way, it'll go up and then it'll come back down and shut off. So that little bit that you drew off before it was completely ready, then mixes and it makes for a consistent, you know, a consistent sugar content in that final product. Because if you draw off and your syrup is too thick, then you're losing product as far as, you know, then you have, it's a thicker syrup, which I like thicker syrup for sure but you don't want to be too far above that threshold and you definitely don't want to be under that threshold because then it's got too much water in it. So it's about maintaining that right at that 66 bricks. So what we do is once the syrup draws off into the draw off tank, we'll add filter aid to the syrup, which is diatomaceous syrup. Okay. And what it does, it takes out all the impurities and everything. So that way it comes out nice and clean. Good All it is is the paper, paper filter. Huh. Paper. Yep.
So what'd you think, folks? Tyler's got a pretty nice setup over there, don't he? He seems to know quite a bit about the maple syrup business. You know, when I left there the other day, Tyler made sure to give me a, a quart of his maple syrup. And uh, let me tell you, very, very good stuff, Tyler. Um, as for the rest of you, if you haven't tried real maple syrup, you gotta try some of it. I promise you, once you do, Aunt Jemima will never be in your house again. Only the real McCoy. So, uh, I hope you all enjoyed that little uh, video. Um, I hope it intrigues you to investigate a little bit more on the maple syrup. If you enjoyed this video, throw me a big thumbs up. And that'll make it a lot easier for anybody else that wants to learn about sugar shacks or maple syrup easier to find. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And make sure you click on that little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Next week, you're surely going to want to tune in because I'm going to do a video on second year beekeeping and what you ought to be concentrating on. So make sure you check that out. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next Sunday, 7 a.m.